So we can see over here what will happen when two waves overlap. Now, as I mentioned, the technical term for overlapping waves is the waves becoming superimposed. So it's easiest to draw diagrams of superimposed waves if we use transverse waves, as we can see over here. Trying to draw compression waves or longitudinal waves overlapping would be a rather difficult task. And I don't think that I'm really up for it. So we'll be using transverse waves, or at least graphs, in order to show overlapping. Remember that if we draw the graph of pressure in a longitudinal wave, we'll end up with something like this, which looks like a transverse wave. Now the wave created by the superposition of two different waves can end up looking quite different to the original waves. Although we can see some similar elements. For example, both waves start off by moving above the x-axis, and so the superposition of the waves will start off moving above the x-axis. When things start to differ between the two waves, like when this wave is low down and this wave is high up, then it means that the sum of the waves will be close to zero. Draw the superposition of these two waves. So in this case, we have to add together the amplitudes of the different waves. So let's look at this carefully. If we look right at the middle of the x-axis, we can see that both of these uh, start by moving away from the x-axis in the positive direction. So that means that the amplitude of the new wave will be very great right in the middle because we're overlapping each other almost perfectly and producing a lot of constructive interference. But as we get further and further out, we get further and further out of phase. By this point in the wave, the trough of the top wave, that is the minimum, matches up with the crest of the bottom wave. Right? That's the maximum. So if we were to add these two parts of the wave together, we'd get zero. So that means that right at the start, we're going to have very high amplitude. As we get further out to here, we'll have a very low amplitude. So we'll get an envelope that looks something like this. And what will happen afterwards? Well, as we can see, we'll start to move back in phase. Uh, at this point, for example, we hit the x-axis at almost the same time. If we went for a bit further, we'd get all the way back to a point like this, where we're completely in phase. What will our resultant wave look like? I'll give you a chance to draw it. It should look something like this. So we can see that right in the middle, we have very, very high amplitude. In fact, it's twice as high as either of the waves that we started with. And just as we expected, the envelope of the beat moves downward until at this point, the waves completely cancel each other out. After that, it starts moving upward again. 